And breaking news just in, breaking news just in, we have just received news from Los Angeles, California, that Michael Jackson has died. Michael Jackson, the king of pop, reports coming in live here on Sky News tonight that Michael Jackson, the king of pop, has died of a cardiac arrest in Los Angeles, California. This is a tragic day for music fans all over the world. The king of pop is dead. Contest chair, Toastmasters, ladies and gentlemen and guests, do you remember the day the music died? I remember the 25th of June 2009 for two reasons. The first, that was the day Michael Jackson died and I was genuinely sad about that. I grew up listening to songs such as Bad, Beat It, Billie Jean, and it was as if part of your youth was literally taken from you that day. And the second reason that I was sad that day is that was the day I was also let go from my job. And that was a dark, dark day. A long way from five years previous, in the middle of the Celtic Tiger, when I started investing in property and investing in stocks and shares and I even set up my own company and for a while I lived the dream and then well then things changed and I pretty much went from millionaire just like a lot of people to billionaire instead of being up a million I was down a million and that was a tough place to be I was broke sad and probably worst of all uh, lonely and back then it was quite difficult to look in the mirror so I sought refuge I sought refuge in my books and there's where I came across the story of Orson Sweat Martin now Orson Sweat Martin was a successful hotelier in the 1800s in the United States but then the stock market crashed back then and he too lost everything and he too failed but out of those failures, it was responsible for changing the attitude of a nation from, from negative to positive by writing a book. And that inspired me. So I put a video up on Facebook telling the story of Orson Sweat Martin and I got hired. I got hired to speak to a class of 16 year olds. Now, 16 year olds can be tedious and, you know, they can be fun, but they ask awkward questions like, <laughs> who are you? And what do you do? And I suppose if I looked at myself, the facts were simple. I had no job, I had no income, and I had no money. And as I said back then, it was quite difficult to look in the mirror. So I went back to Martin. Now, back in the 1800s, Martin owned and operated four hotels. He was a very successful guy. But then the great crash of 1893 occurred. Big stock market crash, similar to what's happened over the last two years. Stock market failed, 567 banks failed, 156 railroad companies went bust, there were strikes, there was unemployment, there was drought. And two, two of Martin's hotels were burned to the ground. He lost all his tangible wealth. He too lost everything. And I wondered, I wondered, well, did Martin have a difficulty looking in the mirror? So I called a family meeting and I remember being very, very nervous. Nobody likes to go in and admit to their family that they've lost all their money, especially a financial quiz kid. And I remember my mother, my mother did what all Irish mammies did, she put on the kettle. <laughs> and my dad, he sat there in his rocking chair, rocking. And my brother, my brother Greg, who's kind of like our family version of Michael Corleone from The Godfather, <laughs> he just stared at me. And I braced myself, I braced myself waiting for the lecture, but it didn't come. Instead, I got a pep talk. Ray, it's the tent round. You're on the canvas. We're gonna drag you in, we're gonna swab you down, and we're gonna send you back out to fight. I was inspired. I went back to Martin. You see, Martin looked around 
during this great crash, at the shambles of material things. And he saw there was a need for inspiration. He saw there was a need for motivation. And that's when he decided to write a book. He said that he was going to write a book that would inspire people. And what he did, he refused jobs. He checked into a tiny little stable and he lived on a dollar and a half per week. And in 1893, he wrote day and night. And by the end of the year, he released his book, Pushing to the Front. It was an instant bestseller. An instant bestseller. And guys such as Napoleon Hill, Dale Carnegie, Brian Tracy, all these people refer to that book, Pushing to the Front. His conclusion, he concluded that character, character, not greed, not wealth, is the cornerstone of success. Character. And that the attainment of values such as courage, integrity, determination, that's real wealth. That's what it's all about. Again, I was inspired. I looked around at the devastation here, through our country. Up and down the land, lots of people have lost everything. Lost everything. Look at the statistics. 100 billion in national debt. 200 billion, or we're heading for 200 billion. 200,000 people unemployed. Uh, um, in negative equity, 450,000 people unemployed, I could go on with the statistics. The fact is we are drowning in a sea of national and personal debt. It's an awful reality. But I want to do something about that. And that's when I started to dream again. That's when those two magic words came to me. What if? What if? What if? I could write a book. What if I could inspire people? What if I could help people get out of debt? And that's when I got back into a job. I started making some money. That's when I joined Toastmasters and learned how to speak. And in the last 18 months, I've sorted out half my own personal debt. And I've even started to save again. I've had to relearn the basic of financial principles and probably the best thing, the most important thing I've learned is that the best things in life are free. Your family, friendships, your health. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, there are many people who are going to go to bed, but they are not going to be, they are not going to be able to sleep. They are worried. They are worried about today. They are worried about tomorrow. They are worried about what the future holds. And that's the tragedy. That's the tragedy because they don't see the opportunity. They don't see the opportunity that your financial crisis could be the key to your financial success. Why? Why? Because after you've lost your job and your income and your money, a small, a small paycheck turns into a windfall. And it's at that point that you learn to appreciate the values that Martin talks about. Courage, integrity, determination, character. Even the greats, such as Henry Ford and Walt Disney and Simon Cowell, they've lost all their money. But that turned out to be the turning point in their lives. It was at that point that their financial crisis didn't get the worst out of them. It gets the best out of you. The question is, what's going to get the best out of you? The day it all changed for me was the day that I looked in the mirror and stopped blaming everyone else. In the words of Michael Jackson, if you're going to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and then make that change. Contest chair.